All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Monty Nefaro, seen only here out of Indie Music TV, live out of Ron Conkama, New York. Mm. This is a special Saturday show yeah. with our special guest, ECW. WWE, just overall pro wrestling icon, Mr. Everybody. Bill Alfonso. But before we get to him, Maddie, how you doing, buddy, on a Saturday? I'm doing awesome. Jimmy, the star of the show. It's Maddie. morning. It's a Saturday. Well, I'm, I'm hit- here. It is a miracle. I'm What's well. Going I'm going to hit you with some bad news. So what? it was on the way in that I heard, uh, so I had to kind of deviate from the script. What? Uh, Tawny Contain, the actress, uh, icon, vixen. Passed away yesterday at age 59. It was uh, actually going through social media, but then it wasn't confirmed. It was confirmed this morning. Uh, Tony Catania, actress best known for appearing in the classic White Snake videos, has died at the age 59. Wow. News of Catania's death began to spread on Twitter last night, but no outlet had confirmation until this morning where TMZ has uh, confirmed this as the case. Thoughts okay. on Tony Catania? Well... Oh, if the video, you know, that I'm I'm shocked, dude. I had no idea. Um, you know, oddly enough, uh, the White Snake behind the scenes. There, I think there was some controversy behind the scenes with her relationship with uh, Coverdale. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Um, she's definitely uh, one of the most gorgeous faces of the '80s. I think that's fair to say. You know, that video was like, whoa, what the. Little drop by. Speaking of some gorgeous faces, <laughs> how's that? But um, yeah, man, I I don't even know what to say. That's that's rough. There goes another uh, another icon, right? Another piece of our youth just fell off the table. Uh, rest in peace. What did she die of? Nothing confirmed yet. Nothing confirmed. Fifty nine is awfully young, um, oh, especially boy. for a woman. Um, yeah, yeah. Hard I've heard they it. live longer. I wonder why. I wonder why. But, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, no, great show good. last Thursday. James Beard from SWE Fury was in. The interview is getting a lot of attention because uh, podcaster Hannibal sure. went on last night. I guess he returned to ca- uh, Canada. Yes. And uh, he had a lot to say about that interview mm-hmm. that we had. Uh, basically calling Teddy Long a piece of shit. I, I mean, what what you, what you get out of that? Well, uh, apparently... A lot went on behind the scenes that, uh, you know, Hannibal experienced. It seems to be that way, you know. Um, very interesting with the Teddy Long situation. I do understand uh, Hannibal's thought process. Like, you know, if you have Kevin Sullivan while you're listening to Teddy Long, I could see somebody thinking that. Uh, I'm surprised at all of this, man. This is this is really weird. Somebody wrote, if this is a work, it's the greatest work ever. <laughs> Wow, I got <laughs> and then kid, and then uh, Hannibal was like, "You think I moved back to Canada where they won't let me out again because of COVID restrictions? You think I'd do this as a work?" This, this so, is, what's your take on all of this? The, my take is this is why if you just take pro wrestling in a little a little microcosm. Okay, um, this is why AEW and Impact they're not going to be able to get along. People, especially wrestling, people just can't get along. Yeah. And that's why you need one leader of the ship. Right. Their way or no way. Right. And, and you don't have this nonsense Un- under- going on. Understood. And even if you do have nonsense, you, you, you cap it in the knees and you continue the machine forward if that's what you're getting at, too. Yeah. You know, so I understand that. You know, there are reasons why uh, WWE still stands at the top despite all the. Uh, Rumors to the, the the contrary. Well, James Beard, I thought was completely honest. He was yeah. really what a gentleman, unbelievable. Absolutely, a great guest. He was awesome. All right. Well, anyway, I don't want to. I'm digressing. So, uh, our special guest uh, in studio is uh, Mr. Bill Alfonso, and we're going to get back to him uh, after this commercial break. But before I get to that, I'm sorry. I'm just a little. Forgot so right now. Well, it must be from the White Snake days because you were. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm a little. Dude, I'm, I'm a little off by that. Yeah, you didn't even tell me before the show. So I man, found out on the way in. It's just. It's just depressing. Just yeah. everything that's going on in this country, and then we start losing icons like that. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. want to thank the band that sings the theme song for Monty and the Pharaoh. Uh, Who's Mr. That? Jimmy Farrell, along oh. with his part of Bart Griggs. Ooh. They make up okay. the band with Stereo Hall. They sing great songs as Riding High, In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. You can find their music on Spotify, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. Please go to the Wisteria Hall YouTube page, hit 
like and subscribe. Give them a little love. People are uh, really starting to enjoy your music, Jimmy, you and Bart's music. Thanks, man. Thank uh, you. If you didn't notice, this is Monty and Farrow Show, Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. You can catch us on the Monty and Farrow YouTube page, Monty and Farrow Facebook Live page. Hear us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor. Catch us on the Monty and Farrow Twitch TV, Monty and Farrow page. Channel 115 every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30. That's New York Cable. And on Channel 20 from 6 a.m. Hey. I'm sorry, from 2 a.m. to 2.30. That's better. On Friday. 2 a.m. is better than 6 a.m. Yes, yeah, 6 a.m. Anyway, so I can get myself back <laughs> into shape. We'll be right back at this commercial break with pro wrestling ECW legend, Mr. Bill Alphonse. <laughs> Just woke Good up morning. Back. Good morning, Matt. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, Autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. <laughs> oh, what's up, Mike? Hey, Jimmy, what's going on? Yeah, not that much. You know, Jimmy, I love this country. Yeah. I love to buy Made in America material. And I love to buy my artwork at TAG, T-A-A-G, Made in America, 14 East Broadway, Port Jefferson, New York, 11717, the shop at the corner. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty DeFaro, only seen here live out of Indie Music TV with a special Saturday show with ECW legend Bill Alfonso. Bill, it's been about two years, brother. Hey, Daddy. I love it. I catch, uh, catch the show all the time. You write a show. I love it. Every time I, I get a chance, I, I check it out. And I wore my shirt you gave me two years ago. We're crazy looking for it, and I found it, Daddy. You guys are my boys. I, I got to tell you, back two years ago, that, that interview met, meant the world to me and the show, but the one part who wasn't part of that was probably your biggest fan, Mr. Oh, Jimmy Farrell. Man. He was just letting me know that outside when I was walking in. But I, I thought I had met him, but I forgot you. it was just you. Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was incapacitated at that time <laughs> for whatever reason. Well, I, yeah, I can't happen. remember. Yeah, I, had a, I had a virus. I had, to, I had to kick it. Before I turn you over to Farrell, how are you doing with the whole corona thing? We have a new president. What's going on, bro? Brother, I'm just cruising along. I'll be 64 in August, so um, I had to be careful. I'm a high risk. So I got my two shots. I've been traveling around the United States. It's a miracle. Before I got my two shots, I didn't catch the damn virus. It's a miracle. And I've been, uh, I work every weekend somewhere in the United States. And it's a crazy. Airplanes, cars, buildings full of people, podcasts, and so on and so on. Uh, so I'm one of the lucky ones that didn't uh, catch it or whatever. But I got my two shots, Daddy. That's for damn sure. Well, I got to tell you, what do you think about the whole uh the new president, Joe Biden. Any uh, thoughts on that? Uh, Slow Joe is uh, doing his job. God bless him. Slow uh, Joe. And, you know, Trump's out. The reason why I liked Trump, because he reminded me of Vince McMahon, the greatest <laughs> uh, promoter of the ball, Vince. So, I, you know, that's what I saw uh, uh, Donald Trump as, as, like, Vince running WWE is like you know the same as Trump running the country, it's and the it's same. a big work, you know. But <laughs> uh, we're gonna give Joe a chance, you know. He's got the 1.9 trillion dollar package. He's helping some people out, and uh, of course, gas prices went up. But all good, Daddy. I'm living large. I'm living like a rock star. Here I am in New York, Daddy, doing a, a show with you guys. That's right, man. Woke up in Tampa Bay, and uh, I go back tonight. I'll be home at 10.30 tonight. There we go. And get, to some Life decent, is good. and get to some decent weather. Life is good, yeah. I just want to say again, thank you for being on with the true version of Monty and the Pharaoh. I have waited years for this. Huge fan of yours. ECW was always secretly my favorite company of all back during the Attitude Era. I, I ran the ECW, believe it or not, before everything else. That was my thing. But uh, let's shift over to... That's very flattering uh, for me to hear that from you guys. Uh, 
Makes me feel really good. Thank you so much. Thank you for all I'm those memories. In my own mind, that's for sure, <laughs> but you know. Huh, you and me both. Uh-huh. <clears throat> it's amazing we both got in the room with the, with the egos, but what are you going to do? It happens. Uh, Fonzie, I wanted to ask you about the uh, dark side of the ring. I don't know how familiar you may be with the, uh, with, check it out. With the product, but um, my partner and I sometimes, we and this is longstanding with us, we go back and forth on Brian Pillman's impact. Um, Mike is not as big on Brian Pillman, but I feel like he made his moments count so much, and that's why we still talk about him today. And so, in a way, while he may not be a legend compared to some, I feel he is legendary. What are your thoughts on Brian Pillman? It's the same as yours. I think he was legendary. If he would have lived a bit longer, he would damn sure be in the Hall of Fame. Um, I think he was ahead of his time. He was like uh, ECW almost, uh, kind of, you know, spit off, but... Uh, he was his own guy, man. He he was badass. You know, pro football player, you know, he had a lot of I just saw the document the, the the deal was on the other night and I watched it. And uh I know all these guys, man. That's what makes it tough on me, is that I know these guys. I know Rick Root, I know Kurt Henning, uh I, you know, Brian Pillman. Uh damn it hurts sometimes because uh you know well you know, we're like a family. Uh, but no, he's badass. Brian Pillman was badass. I love Brian Pillman. He can work his ass off. High flyer, can wrestle. He's an athletic. Uh, you know, he had a, all kind of problems growing up too with his health. Uh, but he outdid that, and you know, damn Brian, we miss you, kid. What do you think his career would have been like had he, you know, not had an untimely demise? What What do you? Th- do you think Vince McMahon would have, after the purchase of uh, WCW and, of course, even ECW, do you think, how do you think that would have played out with Vince and Brian Pillman? Well, unfortunately, Vince wants, well, no, this is good. Vince is uh, uh, family entertainment. Uh, you know, when I started working with Vince in 90, I think it was WrestleMania 9, I think it went there in 93, 92 or 93, and Vince was great, but he was changed in wrestling. He wants the doctor, the doctor's wife, and the two kids at ringside. It's family entertainment. Mm-hmm. Would Pillman fit in there? Maybe not back then, but he would eventually. Be. Now, uh, you know who liked the uh, hardcore stuff was Vince's son, Shane. That's, I think uh, um, Shane turned Vince on to the ECW and it kind of rubbed off, uh, you know, and Vince drafted a bunch of our guys, the Dudley boys and so on, uh, made them big stars. Um, I think Pillman would have found his way right in there mm-hmm. because he was a likable guy. You know, he was good to look at. The camera loved him. The women loved him. The men wanted to be like him. He was badass. I remember uh, we worked together in WCW for Ted Turner. And um, we went out, and he wore triple black with a pair of bone color ostrich boots and that long, freaking curly hair. He was badass, man. And, and I wanted to be like Brian Pillman. In fact, I bought the same outfit like years <laughs> later. You That's know? Funny. Love, I love the ostrich bone color boots and all black. Looks fucking dope. Can I cuss on this show? Sure, sure. Yeah. sure. I'm not a big cusser, but you know, it slips out once in a while. Did you uh, did you volunteer to warm up the girls for uh, Brian Pillman the way you used to for Giant Gonzalez? Like well, warm that was up? a one time deal with the Giant, <laughs> and I wish I would have volu- uh, had that opportunity <laughs> with Brian Pillman because he snagged some beautiful. I women. can imagine. So, I mean, beautiful. I... It wasn't just the girls that came to wrestling. I mean, you would go to the mall. And he'd have five housewives following him around. Uh, honestly, guy, I believe you know, it. Honestly, is. from watching Dark Side of the Ring, though, that guy should have put a jimmy on. I mean, that guy was making babies all over the place, right? <laughs> really? Uh, no. That guy was, I, okay. that was making kids all over. Oh, boy. Um, the My favorite part of those ECW days, my favorite wrestler from those ECW days, the whole fucking, yes, you can curse on this show, the whole fucking show, Rob Van Dam. Uh, your thoughts when he went into the Hall of Fame, I, of course, was absolutely thrilled. By the way, why did you not induct him? What's wrong with them? But uh, your thoughts on the whole... Well, they were limited on, on the people uh, because they're real <laughs> limited on the... Uh, but you're, uh, but you're yeah. Fonzie. Limited? Right. But what did happen that you guys don't know about before the Hall of Fame... 
Uh, you know they're doing the documentaries to be released, released I think in late May, uh, RVD, the whole fucking show. Vince McMahon flew two cameras, two camera crews, a sound guy and a producer to my house, interviewed me for three and a half hours to be a part of that documentary which is coming out soon. And then they followed us out to Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and Van Damme, myself, and Katie did the main event. And of course, we stole the show. He's still badass. Mm. Uh, so, being in the Hall of Fame inductee thing, uh, I was disappointed that much. But you know, it all mm -hmm. plays out in the long run. It sounds like Vince McMahon truly likes you, from what I've I've read and heard. Uh, your th your th your your relationship with Vince must be pretty good, no? I have a great relationship with Vince. I mean, we don't call each other every day, but. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't when expect I went, that. When I brought the giant up, uh, uh, I'll tell you the short story. So we were in WCW, and some guy named Jim Hurd, uh, he was a Pizza Hut manager or something, Spartacus. became the CEO yeah. of WCW, and he wanted to shave the budget down. So they asked everybody to take a pay cut. Uh, the giant said, Fonzie, I'm not taking a pay cut. Why, why should I? It's not a contract. It's valid. He said, uh, I'll leave. He said, do you know anybody in WWF? And it was WWF back at the time. I said, yeah, I know J.J. Dillon. That's Vince McMahon's right-hand man. That's his assistant booker. He said, well, call J.J. So I called J.J. and explained to J.J., hey, uh, oh, Fonzie, how you doing? We bullshitted for a minute. I said, we got down to the business. And I said, hey, they want us to take a pay cut, and we're just weighing our options out. He can go play basketball back in Europe. He can uh, go do this, he can do this, or would you guys be interested in having the largest pro athlete on the planet on your team, on your roster? He says, well, let me run it by Vince. Uh, I'll get back with you, Fonzie. We hung up, you know, real cool. 20 minutes later, my phone rang. Said, uh, Vince wants to know when you guys can come up for a meeting. I said, well, we can come up any time because he just had a, an operation. Uh, he had a spur taken out of his heel, so we're on downtime. Uh, he says, how about tomorrow? I said, okay. So Vince, I said, well, the giant is going to fly first class because he's the tallest athlete on the planet. And uh, me, I can go coach. No matter, just, you know, giant's going to be upgraded. And so Vince flew us up both first class. Instead of going to Titan Towers, you know, the right off of 95 and, and uh, uh, where Vince's headquarters is at, we drove right by and went to Vince's house. I said, well, okay, this is pretty cool. And Vince, as soon as I walk in, he said, oh, fine, I know who you are. You're athletic, boom, bam, bam. And he liked the way I was communicating with him. Uh, he liked the way I dressed. Uh, and uh, In fact, my first time in Madison Square Gardens, because WCW didn't go to Madison Square, Florida Championship Wrestling didn't go to Madison Square, but Vince did. So when I signed the contract with Vince, uh, I see uh, Madison Square Garden, so I'm excited. Oh my God, I'm going to go to the most famous venue on the planet. What's more famous than Madison Square? Boston nope. Gardens? I don't nope. think so. Toronto Maple Leaf? Nope. I don't think so. The LA Forum? Nope. nope. It's Madison Square. Yep. So I wanted to look good. My first appearance in Madison Square. So, you know, I had a nice suit on. I had a Rolex and the Louis Vuitton luggage, and I walk in and. Um, there were guys that we got to get there early because we're doing TV. Did you know I was on the first Monday Night Raw? There you go. Okay. So anyway, um, Madison Square, and Vince sees me, and all the guys are ringside, you know, talking and bullshitting and working out in the ring and stuff. And he says, hey, Fonzie, come over here. He says, Fonzie, you look great. All you other referees, come over here. So all the referees came over. They were in Zubas, T-shirts, tennis shoes. And he says, hey, you see how Fonzie's dressed? From now on, at any pay-per-view, any TV, any big show, I want you to dress just like this. So all the other referees got pissed off at me because they say, hey, Fonzie, why are you going to dress like that? Well, why not? You know, I don't want to look like a guy from the audience. You walk in, you don't have blonde hair and 22-inch guns like Hogan. Uh, you, you know, if, you don't, if you're not freaking sharp looking, I don't think you're from the audience. So I walk in with a th beautiful student and say, hey, who is that? He's somebody, but, mm. yeah. oh, that's the referee, Bill. 
boom. So Vince liked me for many reasons. Um, we did a pull apart. It was Bam Bam Bigelow against, God bless him, Bam Bam Bigelow against uh, Tatanka. Where they were shooting an angle, and then they worked for like three or four months together. So they did a pull apart, and the referees got in there, and I, and I told Bam Bam before uh, the pull apart, I said, Hey, Bam Bam, I shouldn't put my hands on you because I'm 162 pounds, and you're 320, you're a beast. So I'm going to be the first one to you. You see that trash can about 40 feet over there? I said, just throw me into the trash can like a bullet. So they did the fight. We did the pull apart. I'm the first guy there. And Bam Bam launches me like a freaking bullet. I fly into the trash can, take a perfect bump, another scratch on me. Uh, and after the scene, Vince calls me over and says, Fonzie, who told you to do that? Who told you to go flying into the trash can? I said, nobody, but I thought it'd be cool because I'm 160 and Bam Bam, you know, is badass. Why wouldn't he throw me into a trash can? He said, I love it, Fonzie. Hmm. So he liked me for little reasons like that. It went above and beyond duty. Um, and I worked my ass off and I was known as one of the better referees in the country. They flew me to Tokyo, the Japanese office, brought me to Tokyo as a referee. Uh, that night was the most important match on the planet. There was no bigger match that year than Ric Flair against Antonio against Fujinami at the Tokyo Dome. Sixty-five thousand people indoors. That he was freaking crazy, and I did my job fantastic. Uh, so they just don't hire any Tom, Dick, and Harry referee to do stuff like that. Mm. So I was known for carrying my weight, uh, and I was trained and educated and schooled by. Eddie Graham, The Funks, Dusty Rhodes is my hero, and I love him. I told Dusty one time, I said, Dusty, I wish you were my father. Uh, he said, I am your father, son. And he took me under his wing, and he was very intricate and very, um, by the book on, on, on TV production and so on, that's why I got so good, because I learned from the best. So, Bill, speaking of Dusty, we had Ronnie Garvin in, I think, like a week and a half ago. Ronnie yeah. Garvin? Yeah. Right. The yeah. stomp. The, there you go, the stop. He was great. Um, he was great. He seemed not to be too much of a big fan of Dusty, and I know how much Dusty meant to you. He felt that Dusty was all about Dusty all the time. What were that's your thoughts on true. that? That's not uh, true. I don't Well, people got their own opinion, and Ronnie Garvin is entitled to it. Uh, freedom of speech, Daddy. But Dusty was a big producer and a big shot in, in the wrestling world. Not in the ring, in the ring too, the American Dream baby. But backstage, he mentored and ran fantastic, fantastic uh, shows and did really good for different territories. Anywhere he went, he did good. Um, so. Ronnie Garvin, it's your opinion, and they, they might have had a little one-two or something, you know, but maybe that's why I said it, but who knows. But I think uh, Dusty was uh, gold. All right, with that, we'll be right back with pro wrestling legend Mr. Bill Alfonso. <gasps> they told me not to blow my whistle. It's too loud. <laughs> that's right, folks, Canine Corral. For all your dog daycare and overnight care, call 631-549-1544. That's 631-549-1544. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage. Ask for Jack. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV. You can catch us every Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m., but this is Saturday. Ooh, Saturday it's morning. it's 10 a.m. Well, it's a, actually, 11 something. 11 something. Sorry, 11 something. Wow, I am whatever. sharper than I thought. It's 11 But something. we've got special guest, pro wrestling icon. Hey, Mr. I Bill can't Alfonso. believe I'm here today. I'm so uh, uh, 
privilege to be sitting with you guys today, man. I woke up in Tampa Bay. Now I'm sitting here doing the number one wrestling show, probably to me in the country. Love you guys. You guys have been around a long time. You put a good product out. You got listeners. You got fans. How do you like the new studio, Bill? I love the new studio. In fact, I wanted to talk a little later, and I want to do some promos here because mm. uh, I like your studio so cool, yeah, so much. Good. I got something go. big coming coming up. It's happening, and we're launching pretty soon. I'll tell you all about it. Awesome. Excellent, awesome. excellent. All right, Fonzie. We lost uh, we lost Jim Crockett uh, recently. Wanted to get your thoughts on the legendary Jim Crockett. Jim Crockett from Mid Atlantic. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you about Jim Crockett. He was a hell of a promoter. His whole family was promotion. Uh, sure. David Crockett. His father promoted uh, uh, concerts, all kind of stuff. He got into wrestling. He did his job great. Uh, I made nothing but money with Jim Crockett. He treated me like gold. I don't know if it was because I worked hard and uh, 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 what it was, but. I seem to be well liked by these promoters and, and, and big shots. Uh, and I got nothing but good stuff to say about Jim Crockett. I, I didn't even know he passed away. Uh, this is a shock to me. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I figured somebody would have contacted you. That's surprising. Yeah. And I'm pretty up to date on social media. That's surprising. But I've been so busy lately. It's crazy. It's, it's really crazy. I've been not stressing. I'm happily uh, stressing. If, you know, I'm flying around the country and doing tours with Sandman. It's super crazy. I just did a thing with Van Dam. Uh, I'm busy. I'm working for multiple different, uh, we, they call them indie companies, but, you know, these are established companies like AIW out of Cleveland. I just did two shows with them back to back. Tommy Rich was on one of the shows with me. Wildfire Tommy Rich. Um, at one time in the early 80s, he was the biggest superstar babyface. Sure was. In the business. Sure was. Bigger than Ric Flair, bigger than. Because he's a little country boy who could throw a hell of a punch and get busted open, he had that blonde hair, he talked like he was a country boy. People loved him, and so did I. It was great to see him. Bill, last time you were here, you know, we, we, we talked about your grandson a little bit. Can you tell us about your family and and your grandson and everything? First of all, my grandson is badass. <laughs> okay. He just got a uh, national honor roll. Uh, um, he's advancing. Like the levels in Florida are like from or are here. And he's 11 years old. He's got you know why he's good because he's got great parents. My daughter and my son-in-law are freaking super parents. They kept him out of school this year because of the virus and they homeschooled him and uh, um, he's just excelling. He's uh, very good. He's uh, uh, above all the other kids. It's like one out of a thousand they said or you know advanced or something. He's one of those one out of a thousand and I adore him. He's beautiful and he used to look like me a little bit but now he's grown into his own self. Now he's got hair under his arms. He's 11 years old. <laughs> freaking me out he's growing up my kids growing up man it's does he, freaky does, but beautiful does he know that his grandfather is this iconic pro wrestling yes superstar? he does yes he does he's got every he's got all the belts he's got oh, the boy. chairs he's got everything um uh, but I gotta stop giving it to him because the mother says my daughter says dad he can't have all you know he's He's into building two thousand dollar computers himself and stuff like that. He, you know, wrestling was a a big deal to him when he was six or seven years old. He's uh, grandpa on TV, but now he's outgrown it. But he still respects it, and uh, I'm just so proud of my grandson and my daughter and my son-in-law for raising that kid. It's tough, man. It's tough. How hard is it to when you get the? I don't know if you had this conversation or it's coming. Um, when they start talking to you about your partying life or anything like that. Is partying that, life? Yeah, is that going to be a tough conversation? Well, he is super straight. And I, I'm going to tell you, he's a health fanatic. He's a germaphobe. I brought him home some rice pudding. I did it in a container from Publix, the supermarket. Beautiful rice pudding. And he looked at the... Uh, the, uh, the ingredients in it. He said, Grandpa, there's no nutritional value in this whatsoever. 
I can't accept it. Thank you, Grandpa. But you know, uh, what was the question? <laughs> no nutritional value right. whatsoever. Right. So I guess, no, I guess, I guess the question is, where, you know, we're talking about you know some of these wrestlers who have passed away, and obviously it's a rock star. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. about the drugs and all that. Yeah. I've been in Betty Ford three times. Uh, I get caught up in the, in the damn business sometimes, mm. and mm. you know, uh, well, seven or eight of us have died. Uh, Kurt Henning died in a hotel room in Tampa. You know, Rick Root. Oh, you know, all the guys have passed away. I don't want to be a statistic, so I'm not participating in um, any narcotics anymore. Any, you know, when I say narcotics, I mean like pain pills and weed and alcohol and all that. I'm not participating too much in all that uh, because I got to be responsible. You know, I want to be a semi role model to this is parents' job, but I don't want my grandson to. Uh, no, this is grandpa who died in a whole hotel room. It would fucking be crazy to tear him up or to tear me up knowing that that happened. So, um, I hide the drugs and alcohol from him. We kind of shelter him a little bit, but he's not a dummy. He knows what's going on in life. Well, you're 64 years old. You look great. August 11th, the same as Hulk Hogan's birth. Remember, I don't, August 11th was when you wish me happy birthday. Wish the other superstar, Hulk Hogan, a happy birthday to you, both of us, August 11th. And you got abs of steel, which are incredible. Yeah, he does. Itself. What's going on here? I feel really good. I'm, I'm working out. I got my weight uh, managed real well. I eat super healthy. I want to live it. Hey, listen, and if I live another 20 years, that puts me at 84 years old. Can mm. you imagine? Mm. 84. That's so a good I'm grade. shooting for that. I'm that's a good, for that's that. a good grade on the report card. That works. Yeah, that I'll works. take it. I'll take it. I'll be happy with 10. 10 more years. I'm 73. I don't so. know, but it looks like you might be getting 30 out of here. Yeah, he's uh, on He's on his I way. I don't know, guys. I feel pretty good. I don't, I'm not a sick guy. The thing that happens to me all the time is I get busted open. I get busted up. I got titanium, uh, steel, uh, titanium plate, screws, uh, uh, the other day, I went through a table and I thought I broke my elbow. You're still a big gash in my arm. Um, you're just, still going through tables? Yeah, I'm what still doing that crazy him? shit. And I'm volunteering to do it. They don't say, hey, Fonzie, would you mind going through a table? I say, hey, don't you think if I do this and that and you guys smash me through a freaking table, that would be pretty cool. Oh, we love it, Fonzie. Yes, of course. Then when I'm laying on the table <laughs> like this and seeing a guy... <laughs> Do the tear top rope and fly in the midair about thirty feet. I say, what the hell did I just? Do? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Bam! Oh, that's great. My, uh, my bell run quite a few times. <laughs> I've had major concussions, and it's showing a little bit now. You know, like the football players, they get concussions, they suicide, or they thoughts. Mm. I've in the last three years. I don't even want to admit this, but it's true. I'm trying to save the other guys too. In the last two years. I have woken up, not with any drugs or alcohol in my system, I woke up three times in the last two years not knowing where the fuck I was at. It had to take me about 15 minutes to think, damn, did I live here? Is this my place? My girlfriend says, go look in the closet, babe. All you I said, what? You know, it was very fearful when you don't recognize things, but it just lasted seven minutes. One lasted eight minutes, one lasted 12 minutes, and it happened three times. And I think it's directly uh, from the concussions and a little bit of the abuse of uh, alcohol and so on throughout the, all the years. But I think it's 90% the concussion rate because I've had several, uh, I've had at least 10 concussions where uh, four of them had to be rushed to the hospital and get stitched up or stapled up or... Uh, yeah, they were, they're pretty tough to take, man. And now that I'm gaining some age, uh, it's showing, starting to show a little bit. I hope that's not the sign of the future, but man, it's a tough business, man. It is a tough business. You know, the wrestler's shelf, the, their lifespan isn't long. Uh, all of us die young, um, especially in the ring. Their life, you know, you get a five year, six year run. I see all these guys at these conventions and stuff that year. This is a WrestleMania weekend. And there was a show, some type of a meet and greet, some type of autograph thing. 
for five days before the WrestleMania and five days after, and I was on three of them. And I've seen Sergeant Slaughter and this guy and that guy and the Nasty Boys. And those guys, the Nasty Boys, weren't going through tables. They were just regular wrestling, you know, regular Vince McMahon sports entertainment style. And the one, the blonde kid, could barely walk. All of them at these conventions. And it was a major walking like this or slow, and you could tell something's wrong. Some guys can't even, uh, it's, it's just terrible. So that's another reason I'm trying to take care of my body, guys, is because, you know, it's not that I would, you know, I was a referee for 20 something years. Then I went into managing and went with the ECW and all that. Then I got a little hardcore, started taking a little more, more bumps. But man, these guys that take those slams every night, I don't care what people say. If I pick you up, Monty, and slam you, it's not natural. No matter how you fall, try to protect yourself. You're taking thousands of slams in your career. You know how bad that is for your body? That's that's the problem, man. It's fucking us up, man. Hmm. But when we're doing it, we don't think that way. We're chasing a dollar. We're chasing that fame. We want to do good. We want to be the best. So it's, you know, one big package, man, and it's fucking crazy. But I love it, Daddy. What else would Bill Up Fox be doing uh, other than the wrestling business? Well, I was thinking of being a brain surgeon or gynecologist that we could take him from head to toe, but that didn't happen. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you stuck with me in pro wrestling, Daddy. Sports entertainment, Bill Alfonso. Call it right down the middle, baby, every time. And go. I think uh, we could speak for everyone and say we're glad you made that decision. We'll be Don't right you. back with pro wrestling legend, Mr. Bill Alfonso. <sighs> and APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631 390 9050. That's 631 390-9050-APB. Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean, I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631-900-DUMP. Hmm. Welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty Nefaro, seen only here out of Indie Music TV, a special Saturday edition with WWE, Come. NWA, WCW, ECW, Icon, Mr. Bill Alfonso. Hey, thanks, Daddy. I'm having my... Uh, uh, What's he doing? I can't see. I'm shining, Daddy. You He's shiny. He's my, shiny. my forehead, brother. I'm, I'm 64 <laughs> years old, so a little pancake. There's Keep nothing wrong with that. Daddy. <laughs> pancake. Thank you. What is that from? Is that from uh, like Steve Stooges? Uh, it's an R.I. Love Lucy or something. Uh, oh, Thank my Lord. Thanks, Daddy. All right, Sorry, go. guys. All right. Hey, to all the wrestling fans out there, hey, thanks for all the comments. And if you got any questions, uh, type them in and maybe I uh, can answer some questions for you guys. We got That's some questions. About. We oh, got great. some questions coming up. Can't wait, Daddy. I love the fans. I'm a thank you so much. Come on. Check out that nice um, shiny head. I mean, <laughs> nice. See the, the shine. I, I think I need to start wearing makeup. Hey, I'm a little why not? You know. We're on I TV a lot. Fun. We're on taking pictures, you know. Yeah, damn straight. Oh, my Lord. Fonzie, are you watching the uh, current wrestling product today? No. Not at all? Are you aware of AEW? I I? What I watch is uh, the stuff like they're uh, trying to find uh, Triple H and they've got a crew trying to find stuff for the WWE the treasures. And all that. I like that. Uh, I like stuff like that. They WWE just had Jerry the King on uh, last night or the night before. And I couldn't take my eyes off the stuff. You know what I mean? It was great. I was negotiating and finding stuff. It was pretty cool. 
I like, you know, the dark side of the ring, of course, we watch it because I know all the guys on there. Uh, but the current product, like uh, on Monday nights and the one out of Jacksonville, the AEW, I couldn't tell you um, who's on top. I met Brian Cage with the big guns. He came mm. and did an indie show with me in uh, Cleveland. Oh, no, it was in Nashville uh, about a month ago. We clicked pretty cool. But other than that, I couldn't tell you who's there. I mean, I know okay. Taz and Tilly Blanchard and uh, new guys my age that are there, but the the young guys that are wrestling now, I don't know. It doesn't interest me. Interesting. But I got to okay. keep up with it to some degree because it's my business. Sure, sure. Do you, okay, so if you... Not seeing AEW is one thing because that's 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 fine. But I wanted to ask you at least: do you do you think anybody can ever topple Vince McMahon? Because that's certainly what AEW is trying to do. Impossible. Okay. Nope. They can. They I, can I tend die, to agree. They can compete, but uh, and they have a good product. You know, they these guys are billionaires, spending money. He's got good guys there. He's got good production people. He's got good cameras. He's got good bookers. He's got all that. But Vince has got 30 years ahead of him, 40 years ahead of him. How can he follow that? How can he follow WrestleMania? Mm. Impossible. Mm. Vince is the greatest sports entertainment promoter on the face of the planet, and nobody's ever going to touch him. And I wish AEW great success. In fact, call me, Daddy. <laughs> Take uh, fan Charles Wilson is asking... Um, do you think ECW killed the business by having no rules during matches and catering to smart fans? What's the kid's name? Charles Wilson. Hey, Charles Wilson, are you fucking high? <laughs> it enhanced the business. It enhanced the business. Um, no, I don't think it hurt at all. I think it was a good product. And there was an audience out there. There was a market for it. That's for, that's for sure. So it proved itself. There's, listen. They're still talking about ECW today. They're still talking about the hardcore matches. They're still talking about That's Terry right. Funk and Sabu and yes, the Bob Wire matches. They're still yep. talking about uh, uh, guys going through tables yep. and all that stuff. Quarter of a hey, century later, yes. Yes. So, um, yep. no, I don't think it hurt us at all. At all. It enhanced the business, really. And I appreciate the question, but, you know, of course I'm going to stick up for ECW because I was. different eye in a different eye and then everybody copied us look they just put Shaq through a table in Jacksonville didn't they hmm yes there you go all right then shut the fuck up <laughs> there you go. There you no, go. I'm kidding brother Russell. no that's a good question no, you can, you can say it question. you can say it shut the fuck up yeah. love you love you stupid question yeah that's, that's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a legitimate and, question and, legitimate. And, and by the way like you know uh, you know what a UGCW fan. I saw you guys at a high school, for God's sakes, in the late 90s, okay? We weren't smart marks. We were dudes in leather jackets that were looking to smoke a bowl with RVD and Fonzie after the show, and we would watch the show at midnight on MSG. I didn't go on my computer. I didn't type away all day long deciding to break down the product. It, dude, that, that's not how it was, man. It, that's not how it was. We ECW, were amazing. We ECW were amazing. We had the... never seen anything like this. Uh, we haven't seen a thumbtack match. Or a Taipei death match with a different. You haven't seen any of that. Right. So we in, we didn't invent right. it, but it just formulated throughout our process of uh, you know learning how to be hardcore. Fonzie, do you think that sometimes the hardcore almost gets too much attention? Because quite honestly, there were some great wrestlers who came through those doors in ECW as well. Everybody came through there. Thank you. I mean, it was great. Thank you. Uh, man. And everybody fit right in, and everybody loved it, and everybody wanted to go above and beyond duty, brother. Just like I said, I volunteered to go through a table. These guys are, I mean, the style, everybody went through there, and it was great. Mm. So on social media. Revolutionized the business. Absolutely. I, I got to hear the story. I okay. see you on Judge Mathis. I don't know how old this Judge video is, Mathis? but it got really hot on social media with you and Missy Hyatt. I what does it Missy. deal with that? Is Missy really like that? Such madness. No, it was a, it was a shoot. What happened was oh. Missy was dating a guy that managed a strip club, and Missy was beautiful. And she had uh, she was just built, and she was really hot looking. 
and she just had bought a brand new white Porsche, and I had a Porsche too at the same time. So, um, so the guy, Missy's boyfriend, was treating her like a stripper because he's a strip club manager. That's his mentality. So they would break up, and she'd call me up and say, Fonzie, I broke up with my boyfriend. Would you go have a drink with me? Let's go have some lunch or something. I said, sure, Missy. Missy's been a friend of mine since, you know, years, years ago. Um, and uh, so we did. And then they'd get back together the next freaking day. Uh, and this happened about three or four times. So... And every time they'd get in a fight, she'd call me to console her, and then they'd get back together, which is all good. So she calls me, the phone rings, I pick it up, hey, Fonzie, um, I broke up with my boyfriend, and she's crying on the phone. She says, can we go have lunch? I said, of course, baby. She says, well, I'm in your driveway. So I come out, there she is, in a brand new freaking Porsche, not even a thousand miles on it. And said, you drive Fonzie because I'm too nervous. So I jump behind the wheel. I know how to drive a Porsche. I have one too at a 944, badass. Mm -hmm. And so I was driving a car and my phone rings. I'm talking on my phone. I'm trying to console Missy and bumper to bumper traffic. Bam! And I smashed it into the car. $10,000 in damage. Boom. Immediately. And, she, and uh, I said, Missy, don't worry. We'll get it taken care of. You got full coverage insurance. And, this is only deductible. I'll pay for it. Don't worry. So the next day she calls me and says, Hey, my agent said there was a cancellation on Judge Mathis. And we can go on there. They'll give us a talent fee. They'll give us a per diem. They'll fly us up, put us in a five-star hotel, and we'll do one of the slots. She says, You want to do it? I said, Okay. Any publicity is good publicity. And she wasn't mad at me, so we went up there, and you seen the thing was a big spill, and and the judge and um, the judge liked Missy Hyatt, if you know what I mean. He gave me his business card. He said, "Hey, Daddy, uh, if you guys want, you can call me later, whatever." There's people and, at home eating this shit up alive for real. Go on. Oh and, my God. Uh, uh, so we did the episode. It got high ratings. And you know how when you walk out after the 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 judge decides the thing, finds you're guilty because you hit somebody from behind, it's your fault, you had to pay the deductible, but actually they pay for it. Um, and then you go out after you leave the judge and you walk out and the guy interviews you and say, hey, what do you think about the verdict? What are you, what's your opinion on the verdict, Mr. Alfonso? And I said, well, I think it was one-sided because she had two big assets that I didn't have. That's why she won. <laughs> and they aired that. And it was great. If you watch it, it's about seven minutes long. Look up uh, uh, Missy Hyatt, Bill Alfonso, I Judge Mathis, and you'll see the finished product. It was pretty cool, and she's giggly and happy, and, and the judge loved it, and uh, she was good. We were good for the camera, and we told the show. They have uh, producers that said, please, please, we've had, the judge is not in a good mood. He had, we had four episodes already there. They tape eight episodes a day when they're in season or whatever. And the judges die, I said, hey, we're in the wrestling business. You know, you do your job, I'll do mine. <laughs> and we did it really well. And it was one of his favorite uh, episodes, Judge Mathis. He, said, nice. he wrote it in a whatever. One of my favorite episodes is Fonzie and Missy Hyatt. There you go. One of my favorite wrestlers from back in the ECW days is the legendary Sandman. You got some stories, some memories of Sandman? Well, I talk to Sandman all the time. Okay. I talked to him yesterday. I talked to him the day before yesterday. I talked to Todd Gordon all the time. He became one of my best friends. Uh, in fact, I was just on a three-day tour with Super Crazy, Sandman, Fonzie, um, C.W. Anderson, and then their crew, the CCW crew, and we were just on a three-day tour, and we had a blast. And Sandman rode with me every day. We hung out, and He's just uh, pretty cool to hang out with. Yeah, I got some stories about Sandman. So, uh, we're coming back. We're leave. We're somewhere in the Northeast. And the only reason I'm telling the story because it's true, and Sandman has told the story himself. Uh, so, we're coming back from uh, a, a show. We're driving to the next town. And Raven's driving. Sandman's in the front seat. Little Guido's here, and Fonzie's here. So there's four of us in the car. And Raven had got hurt, and they were giving him 
um, a real strong opiate for his pain. And Sandman says, hey, give me one of those. Uh, and he had been drinking all day, beer and this and that, and worked and took bumps. And he was pretty banged up from the day. And Raven says, uh, no, these are too strong for you, Sandman. I suggest you not take it. And Sandman insisted, so Raven gave him one. So we're driving along, we're driving along, and all of a sudden Sandman starts going like this. <laughs> he's sleeping, but he's snoring, he's like gasping for breath. I said, hey, Raven, look at Sandman, Daddy. He's having trouble breathing. He said, ah, he's okay. I said, all right. About five minutes later, I said, hey, Raven, his lips are turning blue, Daddy. He's fucking dying. Right? He's not getting there. He's not ODing. He just can't breathe because something, whatever the fuck it was. So, uh, we call 911. This is a pretty fucking cool story. So, we call 911 and we tell him what happened. He said, Hey, my wrestling buddy who was in a wrestling match, he hit his head, so he took a pain medicine. He's having some type of reaction and he's not breathing. His lips are turning blue. And where are you guys at? We said, well, we're on Interstate 85, uh, headed north. And she says, well, what, what, what exit, uh, what mile marker? We said, mile marker 327. She said, well, get off on 328. We're going to have an ambulance meet you guys there. So, um, so it's about two miles ahead. So we, as we pulling off the exit, there's like 10 police cars. The lady, the 911 operator, misinterpreted saying thought we were in some type of wrestling like a street fight or like a you know a, a, a big problem but no we're in wrestling it was got her in wrestling pro wrestling with Hulk Hogan and but they didn't know it they thought we were uh, so all the cops rushed the car and then we explained it to him hey his, his wrestler no big fight just wrestling he hit his head he took a pain pill so they end up doing the shit, and they take him to the hospital. So, oh my God, this is terrible. So, um, a couple hours later, he comes, Sandman. We're all waiting for him, pacing back and forth. What the fuck's going on with Sandman? Is he dead or is he alive? So here comes Sandman walking out, and uh, they gave him the shot of Narcan and brought him back to life, and all that was okay. And you know what Sandman said? He was mad at us. You know what he said? What's that? He said, hey, daddy, you guys ruined my fucking high. <laughs> Sam, man, your lips were fucking turning blue, you <laughs> fucking idiot. Uh, uh, I can call him an idiot because he calls me one, and I love him. And Sam, man, hates when I'm right. So I hate when you're right, Fonzie. But that's a pretty cool story about Sam, man, dying and coming back to life and all that. But you ruined this high. Root that that was a, you have that some was a peak of the story. That was a punchline of the story, you know. <laughs> yeah. After all that, and his, Sam and got mad at us for ruining his high. Oh my God! I know he's dying. Bill Russell Campbell fan out there wants to know how's your relationship with New Jack and Paul Heyman. Hmm. I just saw New Jack. We were at WrestleMania. I wasn't in WrestleMania, but we were doing the pre-shows there. And I saw New Jack, we hung out, New Jack is badass, he's a good friend of mine, I love him. He is uh, really, he's really New Jack, he's really badass, you know. Uh, what he says is really happened, he don't fuck around. Uh, Paul Heyman, if you ask Paul Heyman, say, hey Paul Heyman, throughout the big run in ECW, what were your, what was your favorite match? What was your favorite match, Paul Heyman? And I was instrumental in helping Paul Heyman in the early 80s get his foot in the door. He already had his foot in the door, but I was assistant booker in Florida uh, for Eddie Graham, Florida Championship Wrestling, and he came down with a guy named Tombstone, and uh, he said, Fonzie, you think I could... Uh, Tombstone was leaving, he was going back to another territory and Paul Heyman was trying to get his foot in the door as a manager. He said, hey, do you think I can uh, manage uh, uh, Tombstone because he's leaving in a couple of weeks and go to the ring with him for the last two weeks? And he had a pair of old jeans on, a pair of tennis shoes and a t-shirt. And I said, well, I didn't know his parents were wealthy, I didn't know he was educated, I didn't know he had money. I said, well, you can't go to the ring like that. That's for damn sure. Can you have money to buy a suit? He said, oh, yeah, yeah. So 
Uh, I said, okay, you can come to the ring. We'll, uh, and Tombstone was doing jobs for uh, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. And at the end of each night, he was getting press slammed. Uh, Paul Heyman was getting press slammed by uh, Razor Ramon. But he wasn't Razor, it was Scott Hall. Uh, so the instrumental would get him. So anyway, ask Paul Heyman, and there's been thousands of matches. I mean, great matches. World champions, Terry Funk, or all kinds of spectacular matches. Shane Douglas, everybody was there. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, Van Damme. And Van, Paul Heyman would say, one of my top three favorite matches as, was Beulah and Fonzie. I was hoping. I was hoping That's you were going to say that. And we don't talk every time. day, but if I seen him, uh, we did a double knockout at the airport, he'd be all over me, I'd be all over him. Uh, we're still good friends to this day. And Paul Heyman um, was very good to me in ECW. In fact, he matched my biggest payday, my one time, like say, you know, uh, I'm not going to give you the exact figure, but I will give you the exact figure. Uh, I did WrestleMania 9. And I got paid, and I made $25,000. Mm. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. So we did our first pay-per-view in ECW, which was called Barely Legal, and it did real well. We were on our way. Got good ratings, got good buy rates, and Paul Heyman said, Fonzie, I got a problem. We, you know, it takes three months to get accumulate all the money back then for the pay-per-view, so uh, it takes a while for you to get your pay-per-view check. So... When the money came in, Paul Heyman said, hey, I got a problem, Fonzie. I said, what, Paul? He says, I don't know what to pay you. You switched from Tad, you were in the main event, you did an angle, you were RVD and Sabu now. It's a big thing, it worked, we love it. But I don't know how much to pay you. And I, I don't know if he was asking me for my opinion on payment, but I said, well, why don't you pay me the same thing Vince paid me for WrestleMania 9? He said, deal and I told him the number and he wrote me a fucking check and I put it in the bank and I was $25,000 richer. Thanks, Paulie. Hmm. Damn. That's With a pretty fucking good payday for an independent company, but we weren't an independent company. We were the, uh, a third company with no corporate sponsors. Uh, no, we were, we were making, say, this is this all figure, we were making $12 million a year but we were spending 13 to make no sponsors, you know what I mean? Until mm. later on, then we started getting, but it was tough. But he still managed to pay me the one of the largest paydays I've ever gotten for one night. All right, with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with the legend, Bill Alfonso. I'm a legend in my own mind. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto excellence. Collision specialist. 631 Two six one six four two zero. That's six three one two six one six four two zero. Auto Excellence. Elm Logistics for all your logistic needs. Call six three one two nine nine three five nine five. That's six three one two nine nine three five nine five. Elm Global Logistics. Pride Performance and partnerships. Jeff Quest, graphics design, custom vinyl lettering, and all your art and video needs. 516-317-8204. That's for Jeff Quest, graphic design. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, seen only here out of Indie Music My TV boys. every Thursday, produced from 9 to 10 p.m., and this Ooh. is a special Saturday show with one of my favorite guys, definitely your favorite right guy, Bill Alfonso. Thank you. That's very flattering for me to hear that, guys. I really appreciate it. Well, that. we love oh, you, man. Pleasure. Thank you. So, Bill. Uh, where yes. are you going to be? Got some upcoming events coming up, uh, some things to promote. Brother, I just got so much stuff coming out. I can talk for hours about it, but I'll cut it short. I'm, I'm working all over the country. I'm doing uh, indie shows, which everybody calls them indie shows. Uh, I'm working for AIW out of Cleveland. I work there several times a month. I'm working for a company, uh, CCW out of South Florida. I'm working for them all the time. 
spectacular company, spectacular talent, I'm making money, I'm doing well. And I just signed a contract with a new um, idea, which is going to be really good, there's nothing like it out there. It's called foreverfan.club, foreverfan.club, and guess who's on it? All the ECW superstars from Sandman and Shane Douglas to, I mean, and Francine, Mikey Whipwreck, we're a family and we have gained so much momentum since ECW um, popularity in the 90s all the way to 2001 that people all the time want to get connected with ECW. Um, but of course, Vince owns ECW, but so we're doing a spinoff as a forever fan. Uh, it's going to be a great concept. It's a big platform uh, where um, it's going to offer several different things. I mean, you can have one-on-ones uh, with all your favorite wrestlers, all your favorite uh, extreme superstars, all my friends like Sandman, Todd Gordon, New Jack, uh, Shane Douglas, Super Crazy, Little Guido, uh, Mikey Whipper, everybody, Francine, everybody's going to, nobody has done this yet and the platform is going to exist of offering several different things where you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the guys, you can uh, get shout outs, you can buy memorabilia, it's going to be great and uh, we're launching really short. In fact, this is the first time I'm broadcasting. Uh, this is a soft launch, and in about three weeks, you're going to be here. I think it's going to be the biggest thing of 2021 and, uh, um, and social media because you got all these guys thriving, and you got all these. When I go to uh, these conventions and so on and shows, I get questions all the time. Hey, how's Francine doing? How's Sandman doing? How about Sabu? What's Van Dam doing? And I got to answer all these questions. So these people are going to be actually you can be able to communicate with not on a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, a two-on-two. There'll be multiple, all kinds of stuff. In fact, for the launch, they're doing a, a contest where the fans can do a promo, like a one-minute promo, send it in, and win, uh, you know, win something pretty fucking cool. And if I'm one of the judges, I'm going to call it right down the middle. So get your promos good, guys. Uh, you'll see, go on, ch check it out. I'm so excited. I, I can't even talk. I'm having trouble thinking about this, man. It's so cool, man, the concept. I don't know why somebody hasn't done this before. Uh, Doug out of Maryland's uh, the big shot in this. He's doing a fantastic job. He's all first class. He's spending money to make this happen. He's hired the best advertiser, the best social media people. I get a personal social media director now. Um, it's off the chain. You're gonna be, it's gonna, it's just gonna be sensational. Foreverfan.club, nothing like it, nothing like it, Daddy. You're gonna be very surprised and very happy once we launch. Guarantee it, guarantee it. 2021, this is gonna be huge for us and for you guys. It's not for us, and you're gonna see how what we look like 25 years later. You're gonna see Francine still beautiful. You're gonna see Missy Hyatt. You're gonna see Mikey Whipwreck is bald and big now and he can't <laughs> work because he's taking so many bumps. Mikey's Youngest so world champion, Daddy. Yeah. You'll be able to communicate one on one. It's gonna be super cool, man. I can't wait for you guys to see us. I'll tell you what, I'm excited about it. I'm oh, like, no, wow, really this is good. a fantastic it's, idea. Uh, oh yeah, it's put together and it's growing and growing. Um, and we're coming up with new stuff. Shane, everybody's on board. Too. Shane, great. everybody. Van Dam hasn't signed the contract, but he's going to give me a rub. You know, yeah. he's going to uh, support me supporting this new company. And I'm right in the middle of this new company, Daddy. And I can't wait. It's going to be great for everybody to see how we look and talk and feel and think. 25 years later, Daddy, and everybody looks great. I got to tell the fans out there, don't miss up out, out on that opportunity. It's going to be very, I, I know I am going to be on it for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get you guys some guest passes. And, That's what and, I'm and, talking uh, about. Right bro. in there. Beautiful. Yeah, you. my guys, man. Awesome. All right, so we're about out of time, Bill. I oh, want to. No, don't wrap me up, Daddy. I can talk all night long. Do not wrap Bill Alfonso up, baby. I'm not ready to stop talking, baby. Well, now, we, we, we want to hit, like we hit you with what we call the Pharaoh's <laughs> final question. All right, Daddy. Wow. The pressure is on. All right. You know what, Fonzie? Thank you, first of all. I'm, 
I was crushed when I didn't get to talk to you a couple of years back, so it's awesome to finally have you here. Thank with, you. With the true I Monty and the Fowl. You guys are flattering me. Uh, what do you guys want? Free tickets to Madison Square? I can't nah, get dude, a more. No, to be honest with you, yeah. there's much love here for sure. Uh, you are he's you're an icon. First and brother, I've had this shirt for two years. Bro, you don't even I've know. Worn six times. It's great, Six man. times I wore this shirt, and I knew exactly where it was. That's what I'm when talking I, about. When the kids said, <laughs> Bobby Extreme said, hey, they want you under uh, the show. I said, I know right where that shirt is, there baby. There it is, baby. Boom. That's what I'm talking Boom. about. There we go. I was there proud to wear it in here for you guys. There we I'm go. I'm proud for you to wear it, believe Thank me. You. All right, Fonzie, here we go. Um, I would like you to give me, if you can, your Mount Rushmore four faces. The Mount Rushmore okay. of, of ECW. Who are the four well, faces gonna... you would put on a mountaintop for ECW? All right. Uh, no doubt in my mind, uh, Sabu, suicidal, homicidal, genocidal Sabu. Is one. Um, no doubt, Paul Heyman. No doubt, Sandman. You only got one more. Well, the last one is he is superhuman. Really, this kid is superhuman. Nobody can do the five-star frog splash like mm. RBD. Thank you. Uh, Eddie Rowe, fantastic. But Van Dam is just, he's superhuman, and he's really badass. He's really badass. So that's my four right there. There we go. And an honorable mention for Todd Gordon, Sam and all these guys, but, you know, my guys are, you know, mm. and, of course, me, honorable mention. I'm chiseled in the back, Daddy. Yeah. We'll put a whistle next to those Hell four. yeah, Daddy. <laughs> there like you I go. I my kicks, baby. Did you guys see my Uh-oh. kicks? Uh-oh. Look at those kicks. Check out. out these shoes, guys. Look at those shoes. Look at this. He's got his face on there. I need a pair of shoes. Like yeah, that. we need Monty and the Faro well, sneakers. I, I wear them a couple of times. I got a friend <laughs> making them in Florida. He's got a company. Uh, you guys get a hold of me on social media. I'll hook you up with them. They're pretty cool. Uh, it does fantastic work, and I love them. And I wore them special for you guys because I don't wear them other than in the ring. Just make sure no one steps on those. That's Correct, for sure. Daddy. I want to remind fans, next Thursday at 9 p.m., or this Thursday, sorry, we've got uh, WWE superstar Eugene in studio. Eugene. And just announced for, I believe, June 28th, uh, it's a Monday at 4 p.m., put it on your calendar. Oh, we've got okay. uh, NWA legend Baby Doll in studio. <laughs> Baby Doll? Baby Doll. Oh, my God. I met her in uh, Texas uh, in 1978, I think. <laughs> How about this one, Bill? On June 25th, it's a Saturday at 5 p.m., we have Jules Strongbow in studio. Do you remember Jules Strongbow? Chief J's tag team, WWF tag team champion. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know the gorilla position, all that, Strongbow. My God. Strong, Strongbow would go like this. Uh, he was an angel. When I was there in WWF, it wasn't WWE yet, Vince wanted to take the word wrestling out of you know WWF. So worldwide entertainment, uh, and Strongbow was an agent and retired from wrestling, but he was an agent and he'd always go like this, like Laura and Hardy, those guys, you know, <laughs> always like that. This is his characteristic. Pretty cool guy, and uh, I love to listen to. It. In fact, I'm going to make it a point to uh, listen to Baby Doll, watch Baby Doll on your show, and uh, Strongbow. There you sure, go. I'm not going to miss that one. All right, if you awesome didn't know it, you are watching Long Island's number one pro wrestler and broadcast, number Monty DeFaro, seen every Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m. You can also catch us on the Facebook Live Monty DeFaro page. Also listen to Bill Alfonso at iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Anchor. And also Bill will be part of the compressed Compressed. Compressed version of our New York cable show on Channel 115 every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30. And for early risers from 6 a.m. Uh, 6 to 6.30. And for the late night people out there, we have it on Channel 20 Friday from... 1.30 a.m. to 2 a.m. Faro time. Bill Alfonso. I, I want to ask, guys. Sure. It is an honor I to have you. I got a I want to ask. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you please not wait two years to have me back on your show? Oh, okay. Even if I can do it via Zoom or via just telephone or call yeah. in or something. Yeah. I love you guys. Really, I'm not kissing your ass, cause you, <laughs> you know. But you guys have a good product. Thank you. You guys have a good product. Thank and you. you're consistent. And uh, presentation is everything, brother. You guys... I enjoy being on the show. I uh, please don't wait two years. 
you got it. Back on. You we're, got it. We're not. Trust me. You got it. I got to tell you. Daddy. Thank you, sir. You haven't heard about Barry Windham getting shot in the leg by you Steve know, Curtin. No. Hey, uh, uh, Wait a minute. What about Piper and the alligator? I got it. There's baby. other stories, dude. He said that at the end of the last the end of you two years ago. You know what? The Come near on. the near plane crash. It, it uh, won't be long. We'll uh, be calling. Superstar Billy Graham, Fonzie, Kevin Sullivan, Oliver Humperdinck, and Ron Bass almost went down in a plane. Oh. We all kissed the fucking ground when we landed, and there was fire trucks and foam trucks lined up again, waiting for us to crash. And we said we'd never get on that twin engine again. Guess what? The guy called us the next week and said, "Hey, it was a carburetor. We got on the same demo. <laughs> right fucking back to fiber, business. The fuck it was. It was crazy. <laughs> right back to business. But well, with that." We want to thank Bill Alfonso. We'll see you guys next Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m. with Eugene.